I can't believe we still don't have these memorized. We've got to get these passes down. Okay. Linguini. Yes. Agnolate. Mm-hmm. Fettuccine. Mm-hmm. And... Girls! The best prosciutto comes from Parma, and I have some. Come and try it right now. Here we go, then. Girls, I hope you're doing well with the memorization of your pastas, but I have to tell you more about my trip. After leaving Bibione and Chef Gabriel, we went across part of the country and we got to Parma, where we met our guy Giacomo, who took us on some wonderful, wonderful trips to some very special culinary delights, one of them being prosciutto di Parma. And this is specific to this region of Parma. What makes prosciutto di Parma so special? Well, it's protected by the EEC, the European Union, because this actual product has to only come from that area. And it's very strictly inspected and it's very strictly enforced because there's a lot of pretend prosciutto out there. The Parma comes from pigs that have been foraging wild and they have just the most incredible flavor. Once they've been cured, they are then hung to dry. And as it's dried, it's very, very strictly enforced, the inspection. And they take these um, bone testers, which is made with horse bone, and this is how they test if the prosciutto is ready. They find the, the five little arteries at the end of the leg, and they put these right up through into the artery, and the inspectors take them out and smell them. And if it's bad at all, the whole batch is condemned. But generally, they do a really good job of curing and drying them. And of course, their sanitation is impeccable. This is generally the way that it will be presented, sometimes with some bread, a little tiny bit of olive oil, and this is just simply a little bit of domestic prosciutto. And here we have a little bit of olive oil, and sometimes something sweet to counteract your actual saltiness of the ham. This is a mostrada of a tomato with a little bit of honey, okay? <laughs> I was in Italy and headed for Parma. On the way, I had a brief lunch in a wonderful city called Bologna. After eating at Trattoria Anna Maria, we were shown where pasta from the restaurant is made. A lovely lady was hand making all of their pasta. It was easy to see why it was so delicious. After getting back on the road, we eventually arrived in Parma. It was there we met our local Parma guide, Giacomo. Parma is famous for its cheese, architecture, music, surrounding countryside, and prosciutto. Our first stop with Giacomo featured prosciutto. Conte has made prosciutto for over 200 years. Here on a countryside hill at the Conte factory, I had the chance to learn more about Parma ham and see exactly how it's made. First step is bring the legs uh, the first process, bring the legs up here, and they press the leg because there's a little blood in inside, and massage also the meat because it's stress. They call it stress. It could be really hard. So it's a kind of massage and uh, take the blood out from the leg. So the open, it opens the pores. The pores, yes, and then and the salt is added. And the salt. Once they be salt, the first time they bring in a room, the cell. The freshly massaged raw pork leg is brought to its first of many rooms, the beginning of the curing process. Here, it is salted and left for five days. After five days, inside of this room, they bring it back 
again. They go back through this machine and they get another salting. Another salt, second salting. This is the second room. It's kept in the second room for 13 days. Next, the salt is removed and the legs are moved to the third room. Here they hang vertically, allowing them to drip while keeping their shape. The next stage requires the ham to be cleaned around the bone. It's important to clean around the bone. Around the bone. Because there is uh, something maybe has to be cleaned, the meat around the, always the meat around the bone is the, uh, most dangerous. the most dangerous things. So after wash, back again in a room, five degrees for two months. Two months at five degrees? Yes. Now a little bit more. It, it almost smells like it's cooking. È, è come, cioè anche come quando lo cucini, cioè si sente come anche quando lo cucini. Oh, cool. like, yeah, the perfume is like it's, com like it's coming out of an oven. Si come quando sei nel, in un forno, quando yeah. metti così. The final stage begins the actual aging process. Look at this corridor of ham. The ham isn't considered prosciutto di Parma until it has been aged for 12 months. While aging, each leg is covered by hand with a fat mixture that keeps the raw meat tender and protected. It has to be done just perfectly or it's no good and thrown out. So the man, the man still, yeah, the, yeah, the machine cannot take over the man. Lastly, we are shown how the prosciutto was tested to make sure it is in an impeccably sanitary condition. This is a bone of horse. Horse bone. Horse bone. Uh, all the legs here are being checked with this bone and show how. And it's over. Okay. So, so there is checking if his perfume is correct. And if it's not, it's not prosciutto di parma. Mm. Smells clean. The inspector, after 12 months, come here with the seal of the prosciutto di parma that I will see, show you. On fire. Branded. Branded. And that is prosciutto di parma. If not, it's not a prosciutto di parma. Wow. I've been using this product for 40 years, finally to understand truly how it's taken care of. It's just amazing. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. That is amazing. Cloatella hangs above us here. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because what you learn in two years lets you transfer to a university at the top of your game. Because what you save in tuition is worth thousands of dollars. Because the hands-on learning and academic support are second to none. Because the honors program challenges you to do your best, while student life makes you feel connected to the world. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. At CC, it's a very diverse campus. Meeting people who uh, come from more diverse environments and communities. GRCC best prepared me, I think, for the university. Like, it wasn't a big jump to where the university had harder classes. In order to advance myself, I needed to have at least an associate's degree. And it doesn't kill your pocketbook. I'm sure we saved thousands. I think it's a better experience. This is a lot more personal. I'm glad I came. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities.
girls a little outside the city of Parma, we were shown another form of prosciutto. This time the leg is boned out and the lobe is actually soaked in red wine before being cured. Chef Massimo taught us this and it's right by the Po River. It's cured for a long, long time. It's called culatello and it's a really rather remarkable form of prosciutto. I couldn't actually get it because it's so rare. But I do have fresh prosciutto de Parma from Parma and I want to show you how culatella, how we were shown how to eat culatella. So what you do is you take the, the piece of culatella and you put it onto your finger like this and then you're going to take it all the way into your mouth like so. I was walking through a prosciutto de Parma factory and I saw firsthand the care put into making the special food from the Parma region. But it's not a proper tour if you can't have a tasting at the end. After 12 months of curing, this unique piece of pork was ready to be eaten. Well, Giacomo, this has been an amazing trip. Thank you very much for showing us your um, amazing Parma ham. It's, eh, it's been amazing. It's una cosa incredibile. Ti ringrazio tantissimo per quello che hai fatto vedere del voi. prosciutto di Parma. And Speriamo di rivedervi presto. Hope to see you again. Oh, Thank, you. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. So the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Yes, la prova è yes. mangiarlo. Sì. And Tasting. we do it. Chin chin. Chin chin, chin, chin with the ham. Prima, prima <laughs> usarlo, sì. Whoa, that is amazing. Luckily, I wasn't finished with Italian ham. Giacomo took me to Antica Corte Palavicina, a lovely hotel and one Michelin star gourmet restaurant just a few meters from the River Po. It was here where Chef Massimo Spigaroli would show us the other form of prosciutto, culatello. So we're now going down into the cellar. Going down to the cellar. Wow. Under the roof of Culatello. Wow. The Culatello hangs above us here. The cellar we were exploring was made in the 14th century, older than the United States. The chef explained to us that the best part of the pig leg is used to make the Culatello. It's massaged with wine, then hung to dry for up to 50 months. The old product they are here, the, uh, the mold, mold pass to the, follow, the, the, the following one that's coming in as new. Since 700 years ago, 700 years ago, so pass year by year to the new To the new product. Colatello that they're hanging. Yes. Colatello wasn't the only thing aging in that cellar, which I soon found out. Chef, for his, for his restaurant, he he keeps Parmesan for 50, 50 months. Oh, no, this is 50 for 2000, years. Two, 2005. Oh, this is then nine years. Nine years old. Yes. Wow, incredible. The salamis are made by the chef and are hanging here for sale. Just no refrigeration, just living in the cellar like it's the best place in the world for them. Look at the color of that culatello, man. This is the end result of the culatello. And you can see just how incredibly colored it is from 50 months of aging. It is absolutely perfect. Under a grapevine canopy outside, we listened to Italian opera. Giacomo and I were poured a glass of Fortuna wine made with grapes grown by the Po River right next door. After hanging, the culatello is washed with white wine before being carved and presented in a fantastic manner. I'm cooking with Angus. I'm in the middle of 33,500 slabs of Parmigiano Reggiano. It's just a remarkable thing to see them all. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? I was ready to build a career. I traded taking notes in a classroom for hands-on learning. I found a program where I can follow my passion. What I'm saving on low tuition 
will pay off if I transfer to a university. And I know the skills I'm learning will build a better community. All those reasons make GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I chose GRCC because it's close to home and I like the campus. Because it's affordable. Because I love the atmosphere. Because they have a great photography program. Because they have a great psychology program. It has the same activities as any other college. Because I can get my general classes out the way. Because it's quality, affordable education. Because, because it's close to home. Because I love Grand Rapids. For medical assisting. Because it'll kickstart my future. At CC, it's a very diverse campus. Meeting people who uh, come from more diverse environments and communities. GRCC best prepared me, I think, for the university. Like, it wasn't a big jump to where the university had harder classes. In order to advance myself, I needed to have at least an associate's degree. And it doesn't kill your pocketbook. I'm sure we saved thousands. I think it's a better experience. This is a lot more personal. I'm glad I came. April and Megan, when we were in Parma, one of the other trips that we did was to Parmigiano Reggiano, which is the king of Italian cheeses. And it's very, very specifically made, governed. The milk comes in every single morning. It's aged, and it goes through this incredible process. And at the end, these pieces of cheese are aged for three years. And in the actual factory, there was 33,000 cheeses being held, and it was just incredible how wonderful they were. So I see you have some tools there. How do you use those with the cheese? Okay, so we have three specific tools. This tool here is what they use to open the cheese when it's completely ripe. And it's, it's got a very, very sharp little blade here, enough to cut through the rind, because the rind of, of this cheese is extremely difficult to cut. And they go all the way around the cheese, flipping it over, and they cut through. And then they use this, like almost like a wedge, and they put it in, and that's what they use to open the cheese. And this tool here <laughs> is to actually serve the cheese. What you do is you just simply break the pieces off like so. You see that? When you break a piece off for yourselves, and, and, and then we can try it, because it truly is a remarkable cheese. There we go. You see that? Parma is probably most famous for Parmesan cheese. So we headed to a factory where they make the king of Parmesan, Parmigiano Reggiano. Before learning how this beautiful cheese is made, I got to see an entire wheel being opened. So look at this, this is an art. You have, you have to know what to do. Yeah. If you don't know it, better you do something else. I've never seen this in my life. This is just. Sorry. You're kidding. He's got it open. It's and now broken. it's time. No way. Ah! Wow. Bravo. Bravo. Wow. It's like it's extraterrestrial. It's like, it's, yeah, like another, room. it's like from another planet. Yes. It was time to learn the process of creating Parmigiano Reggiano. Here at Four Madone, Giacomo explained that it all starts with the milk, which is also under a consortium, just like the cheese. That's where the, the truck comes with the, with the milk. 
the milks come two times a day, due volte al giorno, two times a day, in the morning and, uh, and uh, in the evening time. From local farms? For, see. The milk then goes to the production area, into large bowls where they are heated, fermented and combined with rennet. I had no idea that it was so deep. Deep. 1,000 liters of milk to produce uh, two wheels of cheese, which is nothing, basically. Wow. It's very, very deep. Yes. Next, one of the many skilled cheesemakers begins helping the separation of the whey from the curds. The grain falls and forms a solid at the bottom, which is carefully fished out by the two cheesemakers. Everything is manual, look at that. You need strong arm. Oh, look at that cheese now. Ah, now he's gonna try to catch it. Yes. The Parmigiano Reggiano. The baby. This is the baby. That's, that's the stork carrying the babies. Exactly. Now it begins the aging process. He's putting the cheese that's just been made into the mold that is going to create the shape eventually of the parmesan. And then over here they're putting the they're putting a lid on it and then some weight. The cheese will eventually go into a new mold where it will age further. Then no mold is required and it will continue to age for three years. This is uh, Parmesan. The king of the cheese. King of the cheese. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. We take care of them like they're just like their children. It's just unbelievable quality. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because I was ready to take my future into my own hands, and GRCC gave me that opportunity. Because the money that I'm saving on the low cost of tuition, I'll use to earn my bachelor's degree. Because I'm making connections to build my career. Because while I share my ideas with other students, I'm pushed to challenge my limits by my professors. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities. Chef, I see the way that you plated the Parmigiana Reggiano. Why did you put these specific ingredients on the plate? If you were serving this as a cheese course, you have this incredibly powerful cheese that's got a high salt content. And you can actually feel the granules of salt in it when we tasted it, you know what I mean? It's like very salty. So what we have is we have sweet items, some bitter items, and some smooth oils in it. So we have some olive oil, we have a little sweet vinegar, we have some sweet pickled vegetables. Counteracting these flavors is gonna balance out that salt big time and you're gonna get really brownness of flavor in your mouth. You don't wanna eat too much of that product with the cheese because the cheese really has to stand up on its own. But these accompaniments really balance out the, the total flavor of the, of the cheese. 
I was learning how Parmigiano Reggiano was made and was just about to walk into the final step in the aging process. I wasn't ready for the stunning visual it creates. Whoa, look at this place, man. Look at this place. It would take probably 20 of me <laughs> before I get to the top of that. And how long is it in here until it's cheese? Quanto tempo rimane prima? Minimo 12 mesi per essere venduto. To be a Parmigiano Reggiano cheese has to be minimum 12 months. 12 months. In order to maintain quality, an inspector will arrive at the factory and use a small hammer to see if there are any holes inside the cheese. I wonder how many cheeses this has tested. Oh. <laughs> If there are no holes, it's considered Parmigiano Reggiano and branded with the official stamp. If there are holes, the cheese is considered defective and it's placed in the defective area. These are defective? Yeah. But, but it doesn't mean that there's a, it could be a little small hole, but it doesn't mean that it's not good cheese. You can sell it as a second quality, but not as a Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. I see. So this scratch away all the... The stamping, so that that stamp can never be put back on. No. And this is what happened... Earthquake. This is yeah. what happened What's during the earthquake. Ola? That's right here? Yeah, right here. Oh, look at all the cheeses. Huh? Yeah, that's... They, because they touch the ground. They're done. Done. To get a sense of how much cheese was aging in this place, I took a walk all the way down one of the aisles. It is unbelievable. I'm in the middle of 33,500 beautiful rings or slabs of Parmigiano Reggiano. Just the smell in here is totally overwhelming. And the, the, it's just a remarkable thing to see them all. And they're turned every 10 days. You can see the difference in the color between this one and that one. They take care of them like they're just like, like they're children. It's just unbelievable in quality and the amount of care they take with them. It's really, really amazing. Our tour was coming to an end, which meant I could finally taste a newly opened Parmigiano Reggiano. You cannot get more fresh than what I had. It's not the perfume. Oh my goodness. Take it. I can take it? Yeah. You break it? You smell it. Oh my god. It smells like wine. It smells like wine. <laughs> like yeast and wine and magnificent. Magnificent. Jacko, I just want to express my thanks for this incredible show to all these wonderful people. Uh, dire grazie per questa and thank them so much for their time and their hospitality has been amazing. Yes, bravo. <laughs> Right, so Chef, I was wondering... No more questions. Back to your studies. Next time on Cooking with Agnes. These two beautiful people have helped us and shown us their amazing balsamic vinegar and the flavour, the tastes we've had, have just been outstanding.